For the first time in 60 years, a ceremony will be held in three days to appoint a new princess to govern Emuakuni. The reigning princess, Kikiri, orders the twelve Shinshu to protect the new princess, and they swear their allegiance to her. Meanwhile, in modern-day Japan, a young boy named Arata Hinohara prepares himself for his first day in high school. His younger sister now informs him that breakfast is ready and she'll walk partway to school with him. However, Hinohara refuses her kind gesture and chooses to embark on his journey alone. Next, it is revealed that despite enduring severe bullying during middle school from a boy named Kadoaki, Hinohara managed to form a friendship with a guy named Suguru. Later, Hinohara showcases his excellent running skills, prompting the coach to suggest that he join the sports club. However, Hinohara refuses and reveals that he's not interested in sports at all. Subsequently, Hinohara encounters Kadoaki, who informs him that nothing has changed since middle school and that he will continue to bully him. On the other hand, while being surrounded by bullies, Suguru reveals that he is tired of Hinohara's presence and that they were never friends to begin with. Overhearing this, Hinohara's trust shatters. The scene then transitions to Arata of Emilakuni as he attempts to flee from his grandmother, Makari. However, she retaliates by attacking him with her Amatsuriki, leading to his unsuccessful escape. Later, it is revealed that Arata belongs to the Haim clan and has the chance to become the ruler of Emilakuni. However, there is one condition. He must disguise himself as a girl since only princesses are permitted to govern Emilakuni. Katoa, his childhood friend from the Anime clan, encourages him and offers to assist but Arata refuses to dress like a girl. Consequently, Makari reveals that only a daughter of the Haim clan who possesses Amatsuriki can ascend to the throne of Emilakuni. Unfortunately, the Haim clan has not been blessed with a daughter for many years. That is why Arata must cross-dress as a girl to assume the role of the princess. However, Arata discloses that as a boy, he does not possess Amatsuriki and if his true identity is discovered, it would result in his execution. Much to his surprise, Makari tells Arata that if the Haim clan doesn't have a daughter, the whole clan will be punished and wiped out. That's why she wants him to stay alive to protect their clan and the sacred Heigami, which is a divine Goshentai passed down by their ancestors. Then, Arata picks up the Goshentai, believing it to be a worn-out sword, and begins playing with it. Makari scolds him for his behavior, but her frail health causes her to collapse. Witnessing this, Arata accepts her requests and agrees to fulfill her demands. Later, while journeying to the capital, Kadoha reveals to him that only a daughter of the Haim clan who possesses Amatsuriki can control the Heigami, the gods of their world. Furthermore, Princess Kikuri has reached old age, and the Haim clan has not produced any daughters in the past 30 years. As a result, she has ruled for 60 years so the fate of their nation now rests upon the upcoming ceremony. Arata, finally dressed as a princess, comes to understand that this act is merely a means to buy time while they continue searching for a genuine daughter of the Haim clan, who can fulfill the role and ensure the survival of their nation. Kadoha tells him that the ceremony will go on for three days and he only needs to hold on for that duration, feeling overwhelmed with tension. Arata expresses his desire to vanish into a distant world. Afterward, Kadoha presents him with the Michihi no Tama, a charm she received from Princess Kikuri during her service in the capital. As a result, Arata becomes even more determined to deceive the princess and rescue his clan. Later, the ceremony commences, and Arata instructs Kadoha to return to the village and lead the villagers to a distant location, ensuring their safety. Meanwhile, he resolves to buy them time by facing the challenges of the next three days alone. Afterward, he encounters Princess Kikuri and is taken aback by the fact that she does not resemble an old crone as he had expected. To his relief, she fails to see through his disguise, and the ceremony begins with the twelve Shinshu attentively observing her. Arata feels embarrassed but intends to confess to the princess. However, Kanagi arrives and slashes the princess, causing her to collapse. Luckily, she encases herself in a cocoon to survive. Arata realizes that the twelfth Shinchu has betrayed her while Kanagi realizes that Arata is a boy. Kanagi tries to kill Arata, but he manages to escape temporarily by jumping into the water. Then, Kanagi falsely accuses Arata of killing the princess while disguised as a woman and fleeing. To make matters worse, Kanagi labels Arata a traitor and orders his immediate capture for execution. Meanwhile, Arata goes to the dangerous Kando forest, known for devouring people, while Kadoha tries to find him. On the other hand, Hinohara decides that he will never trust anyone again and wishes to vanish somewhere. Suddenly, Arata and Hinohara find themselves in the same location, causing their positions to switch inexplicably. Hinohara, unaware of the switch, emerges from the Kando forest, bewildered about his whereabouts. However, Kanagi manages to find him and strangely, an illusion hides the switch from others, allowing Hinohara to pass as Arata. Kanagi thinks the forest has erased Hinohara's memory, and he tries to escape. Luckily, Kadoha saves Hinohara by teleporting him in the middle of the forest, although he remains unaware. 
They manage to escape while Kanagi meets Akachi, another member of the 12 Shinshu. Akachi blames Kanagi for failing to capture Hinohara, but Kanagi promises to catch him. Meanwhile, Kadoha and Hinohara reunite with Makari in their village, and Hinohara explains everything to her. Makari discloses that those who are consumed by the Kando forest undergo a complete transformation upon their return. She informs Hinohara that he has exchanged places with Arata and there is no way to reverse it. From now on, he must live as the Arata of this world and Hinohara becomes frustrated by this revelation. It is revealed that Hinohara has endured bullying at school, faced betrayal from a friend, and now finds himself trapped in this world, branded as a criminal. Suddenly, Kanagi appears and takes Kadoha hostage while Hinohara hides. Makari and Kadoha stay silent about Hinohara's whereabouts, risking their safety. However, when Kadoha expresses her unwavering trust in Hinohara, he emerges from hiding. Hinohara seizes Arata's Hayagami to confront Kanagi, but he is swiftly assaulted by Kanaga's Hayagami. Hamura, the God of Fire Makari instructs Hinohara to activate his Hayagami, and to everyone's surprise, he succeeds. Hinohara's Hayagami effortlessly overwhelms Kanaga's Hamura, leaving everyone in shock. Recognizing that Hinohara is a show, Kanagi retreats from the battle and suddenly, the building starts crumbling but later everyone survives. Meanwhile, in Japan, Nao and her mother are unable to reach Hinohara. Unexpectedly, a half-naked man captures everyone's attention. Afterward, Hinohara's mother rushes forward and discovers that the half-naked man is none other than her son, Arata who looks like Hinohara due to the illusion. Back in Emoakuni, Kanagi ponders over the enigma of how Hinohara's Kamui nullified Hamura's flames. He speculates that a new Hayagami may have appeared, introducing an unforeseen twist to the situation. Meanwhile, Makari, Hinohara, and Kadoha are hiding in a cave. Makari reveals a crucial truth to Hinohara. All the gods of Amoakuni exist in the form of swords, including the very one wielded by Kanagi, representing the god of flames. The radiant light emitted by Hinohara was none other than a Kamui, a mighty divine power. Moreover, Hinohara has been chosen as a show, an individual entrusted with the extraordinary power of the gods. Kadoha kindly offers him a meal, but Hinohara declines, feeling the need for some fresh air. Meanwhile, Akachi arrives on the scene and meets Kanagi, bringing news of changes to their plan. Now, the top priority is to bring Hinohara back alive, as he will be publicly convicted to re-establish the authority held by the Twelve Shinshu. The scene shifts to Hinohara who finds himself engulfed in a life-threatening crisis, unsure of how to navigate the dangerous path before him. Suddenly, Kadoha appears, holding a plate of cold food in her hands. She approaches Hinohara with a gentle smile and insists that he is Arata, despite his current memory loss. Hinohara tries to convince her otherwise, but Kadoha's belief in their connection remains unwavering. Unable to contain her emotions, Kadoha embraces Hinohara tightly, promising him constant support and reassurance. Her words convey a deep sense of loyalty and devotion, as she vows to always stand by his side. Their heartfelt exchange solidifies their bond, providing comfort and solace amidst their uncertain journey ahead. Meanwhile, Makari spots a group of people coming closer to their hiding spot, carrying torches ablaze with fire. Consequently, she decides to hide the Hayagami. On the other hand, Kadoha realizes that the Michihi no Tama she had given to Arata is missing. Curious, she asks Hinohara about it, and he sheepishly admits that he may have lost it. Without hesitation, Kadoha presents him with her own personal Michihi no Tama and commends his brave actions when he came to her rescue. To their surprise, Kanagi arrives, holding Makari hostage. He threatens Hinohara, demanding that he come with him or else Makari will be harmed. Kanagi brandishes his Hamura and orders Hinohara to draw his Hayagami as well. However, Hinohara chooses a different approach. Instead of fighting back, he decides to surrender and submit to his capture. He understands the futility of resistance and accepts his fate. Hinohara is then taken to the capital, where a trial awaits him the following day. The trial will determine his future and the actions that will be taken against him. Suddenly, Hinohara's Michai no Tama begins to glow, revealing a mirror that allows communication with Arata in Japan. Unaware of the truth, Hinohara confronts Arata angrily, accusing him of killing the princess. However, Arata surprises him by revealing the truth that all the twelve Shinshu had betrayed the princess. This revelation leaves Hinohara in shock and disappointment. Tired of having his trust betrayed, Hinohara seeks reassurance from Arata, asking if he can trust him. However, Arata's response shocks him further. Arata advises him not to trust him, explaining that the more someone insists on being trusted, the less trustworthy they become. Despite this, Hinohara informs Arata that Makari and Kadoha are safe as they were not taken away. Arata assures him that they will be able to return to their normal lives, and the communication through the mirror fades away. Later, the trial commences with the deliberations of the Twelve Shinshu, determining Hinohara's fate. The scene shifts to Makari, 
who reveals that even if Hinohara receives a verdict, they still have some time. She asks Kadoha for a favor, and Kadoha immediately agrees. Meanwhile, in the court, it is revealed that the princess used her Amatsuraki to save herself, but she remains on the brink of death. Kanagi lies to the court, claiming that the twelve Shinshu deeply regret their inability to prevent this tragic outcome. Disgusted by the lies, Hinohara shouts out the truth, accusing the twelve Shinshu of plotting the princess's murder and betraying her trust. However, the twelve Shinshu deny their involvement, and the people in the court demand Hinohara's execution. Kanagi delivers the final verdict, sentencing Hinohara to exile in Katoya, the ultimate hell. He explains that while Hinohara would typically receive the death penalty, it wouldn't satisfy him. Instead, Hinohara will reflect on his sins in Katoya, a living hell. Hinohara is taken away on an airship, with Kanagi declaring that he won't kill Hinohara until he discovers the truth about his Hayagami. Later, it is revealed that Kadoha purposely sneaked onto the airship and is now also sentenced to Katoya with Hinohara. However, she gives Hinohara his Hayagami and informs him that it is useless unless wielded by its show. Hinohara attempts to activate it again but fails. Suddenly, his Michihi no Tama glows once more, and he and Kadoha are transported to an unknown world where they encounter Princess Kikuri. It is revealed that Kikuri has chosen Hinohara as her new Shinshu, and she humbly asks him to listen to her plea. She tells him his words during the deliberation made her quite happy and she realized his true sense of justice. Until now, she has used the Amatsuriki to keep the Hayagami together as one and to control their Kamui. However, now that she has fallen, the Hayagami have been freed and if the Shou who wield the Hayagami begin to use the Kamui freely, that power will take over the world. Consequently, it'll distort justice and the people will cry out in agony. She reveals that she's somehow still alive but for how long, she doesn't know. That's why she wants him to lead Emo Akuni in her place and bring his Hayagami to her before she dies. However, Hinohara reveals he's not capable of doing that since he's powerless. Despite that, Kikuri claims that she trusts him and disappears. Later, Kadoha informs him that people who have become Sho can house the Hayagami within their bodies. After successfully storing his Hayagami, Hinohara and Kadoha arrive at the mysterious island of Getoya. They find themselves surrounded by strange prisoners, who immediately label Hinohara as a killer. Two young boys, Kanate and Jinjai, step forward to challenge him. Kanate, the redhead, launches an attack, but Hinohara skillfully dodges all of his strikes. Suddenly, the ground starts to shake, signaling the beginning of the Hour of Reckoning. Filled with fear, the prisoners begin to flee, including Kanate and Jinjai. Amidst the chaos, two people are swallowed by the twisted pipes of Gatoya. Awesome. One of the prisoners approaches Hinohara and explains that Tsutsuga, the warden of Gatoya, controls the Hour of Reckoning. Each day, he selects two prisoners who are then consumed, leading to their demise. Osam steals Kato as hairpin as payment for her information and departs. Meanwhile, in the capital, it is revealed that the twelve Shinshu are returning to their respective lands. Before leaving, Kanagi discovers that there are no records of Hinohara's sword or its Kamui. In a surprising encounter, he comes across Akachi, who hasn't left yet either. Akachi expresses his curiosity and asks Kanagi why he sent Hinohara to Gatoya. Kanagi responds by stating that he wants to learn more about Hinohara and will report back once he gathers more information. Akachi advises Kanagi to avoid acting independently and departs. Meanwhile, in Gatoya, Hinohara feels lost and uncertain about what lies ahead. He attempts to activate his Hayagami but fails. Kadoha guides him to the baths and reveals that the prison's pipes are connected to an underground water vein. To Hinohara's surprise, she uses her magical abilities to heal his wound and explains that the Unimai clan possesses this power to protect the Haim clan masters they serve. Using her abilities, she brings him a sense of calm and peace of mind. After the hour of reckoning begins, Hinohara attempts to express his gratitude to Kadala, but the ground splits apart, causing her to fall into the underground pipes. Filled with worry, Hinohara frantically searches for her, questioning others about her whereabouts. However, a group of deranged prisoners, labeling him as the princess killer, set out to kill him to escape Gatoya. Thankfully, Hinohara manages to evade their pursuit and finds a safe hiding spot. There, he encounters a mysterious spirit, later revealed to be Tsutsuga's spirit, who insults him as a cowardly show before vanishing. Subsequently, Hinohara encounters Osum once more, who informs him that Kanate has abducted Kadoha and warns him about Kanate's troublesome nature. This time, Osum decides to provide the information without charging a fee. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Kanate and Jinchai have rescued Kadoha, but Kanate becomes flustered as he harbors feelings for her. On the other hand, Hinohara unexpectedly crosses paths with Jinchai. Feeling shy and concerned, Kanate decides to check on Jinchai, only to find him unconscious near Hinohara. Filled with anger, Kanate launches an attack on Hinohara, but this time Hinohara skillfully blocks all the strikes with his sword. Determined to protect Kadoha, Hinohara's resolve strengthens. Suddenly, 
One of Bluebeard's minions, Zanji, appears to attack Jinchai. Swiftly, Hinohara delivers a powerful kick to defeat the minion effortlessly. Jinchai reveals that earlier, he was attacked by other prisoners who stole his precious ring, but Hinohara came to his rescue. Enraged by the theft, Kanate asks Hinohara to take care of Jinchai while he goes to retrieve the stolen ring from the prisoners. Kadoha uses her healing abilities to nurse Jinchai back to health, and he shares his past with her. As a child, he was kidnapped by a gang of thieves, but Kanate became his older brother and protected him. Unfortunately, when the gang faced false accusations, Kanate and Jinchai were framed for what happened, resulting in their imprisonment in Gatoya. Jinchai's ring holds great sentimental value, as it was given to him by his mother when they were separated. Filled with determination, Hinohara resolves to deliver his Hayagami to Princess Kikiri and find a way to escape from Gatoya. However, Jinchai reveals that it's nearly impossible because Warden Tsutsuga is a show who possesses a Hayagami, holds ultimate authority, and cannot be defied. Suddenly, Kanate returns unharmed with the stolen ring and instructs Jinchai to hide it. He expresses his gratitude to Hinohara for saving Jinchai and challenges him to resume their interrupted fight. As they prepare to clash, the hour of reckoning strikes again, and Tsutsuga engulfs Kanate in his monstrous form. Tsutsuga then turns his attention towards Hinohara, but Jinchai bravely pushes him aside and is swallowed in his place. Filled with anger and determination, Hinohara vows to save both Kanate and Jinchai, unleashing his resolve to confront Tsutsuga and challenge the prison's oppressive rule. Hinohara and Kadoha venture through the prison's pipe-filled path, searching for Kane and Jinchai. Kadoha feels scared, but Hinohara assures her that he will protect her. Meanwhile, Kane and Jinchai wake up, finding themselves tied up to the pipes. Despite Kane's efforts, he struggles to break free from his restraints, and Tsutsuga announces the beginning of the judgment process. Meanwhile, Hinohara and Kadoha coincidentally encounter Osum, who invites them to come down. However, Hinohara denies it and informs her that he has to save his friends. The only way to do that plus break out of this prison is by defeating Tsutsuga which shocks her. She advises him to renounce his cause but Hinohara respectfully refuses and she returns Kadoha's hairpin she stole earlier. On the other hand, Kanate pleads for his life and Tsutsuga gives him one last chance. He orders him to fight Jinchai. The winner between them will be declared innocent and set free. What's worse is, if he refuses he'll die so out of helplessness, Kanate agrees. Tsutsuga throws their weapons but Jinchai begins crying and refuses to fight his brother. Kanate gets furious and urges him to fight while rushing at him. Meanwhile, Hinohara and Kadoha finally find them only to witness them fighting each other to death. Hinohara steps in and tells Tsutsuga to stop this madness but he refuses to allow anyone to interfere with his sacred judgment and attacks him. Hinohara effortlessly dodges all of Tsutsuga's attacks while Kanate gets aggressive with Jinchai and tells him he's not his brother anymore. Suddenly, he jumps at him and Jinchai unintentionally lands a final blow defeating his brother. The scene then shifts to a flashback, where it is revealed that Kanate's brother kidnapped Jinchai and instructed him to look after him. Consequently, the bond between them grew stronger and Kanate promised Jinchai that one day, he'll take him back to his mother. Afterwards, Hinohara realizes that Kanate lost intentionally to free Jinchai and Tsutsuga declares Jinchai the winner. However, much to everyone's surprise, he goes against his word and grabs Jinchai by declaring him a murderer. Consequently, Hinohara draws out his sword and intervenes to save Jinchai. Tsutsuga gets furious and aggressively tries to swallow Hinohara but he manages to evade him while all the prisoners watch their battle. Unfortunately, Hinohara gets blown away in midair and barely manages to save himself with his sword. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Kanagi is approaching Gatoya to meet Hinohara. Tsutsuga arrogantly informs him that a show who cannot use his Hayagami can't oppose him. Hinohara runs out of energy, however. The urge to live up to everyone's trust causes him to activate his Hayagami. He effortlessly annihilates Tsutsuga's pipes with his Hayagami and defeats him in a single blow. Ultimately, he meets Tsutsuga, an old man whose sword is stuck in his stomach and he's immobilized. Hinohara tries to free Tsutsuga from his pain however, he is taken to his memories. There, it is revealed that he used to be a fair warden with a strong sense of justice. He trusted the prisoners and gave them the opportunity to repent themselves but one day, he was betrayed and killed. Consequently, he transformed his Hayagami into a demon and merged with it. With the power of the demon, he restructured Gatoya to imprison all the sinners for eternity. He urges Hinohara to kill him but instead, Hinohara tries to remove his demonized Hayagami from his body. Consequently, the power of darkness overwhelms him but Hinohara refuses to give in. Despite the betrayal, he claims that he still has faith in his friends and saves Tsutsuga which shocks him. Then, the true form of Saniwa, Tsutsuga's Hayagami of Judgment reappears. Unexpectedly, Tsutsuga submits his soul to Hinohara's Hayagami and tells him to restore Gatoya to its original form. 
As the new warden, Hinohara then uses Saniwa and restores Katoya to its original state and releases all the prisoners who were trapped inside Saniwa. Kanagi notices the transition and rushes to the island but it is revealed that Hinohara, Katoha, Jinchai, and Kanate have escaped. Then, he meets Tsutsuga's soul which discloses that Hinohara's Heigami Tsukoyo is the sort of origin that will rule over this world. In Japan, the doctors inform Arata's parents that he is experiencing a temporary memory lapse. As a result, his father decides to keep him out of school for a while. However, they decide to treat Arata normally, and he suggests that they go hunting together sometime. Meanwhile, Kanagi is flying towards Kagatsuchi, still shocked by Tsutsuga's submission to Hinohara. On the other hand, Kanate, Jinchai, Kadoa, and Hinohara have successfully reached the island. Kanate reveals that they are currently in Narutaki, which is quite far from the capital. Hinohara ponders whether they will be able to reach the capital, and Kanate informs him that they would have to pass through Kanaga's domain if they set out from Narutaki. Kadoha adds that Emawakuni is divided into 12 domains, excluding the capital, and each domain is ruled by one of the 12 Shinshu. In a sudden turn of events, Jinchai catches sight of distant bonfire smoke on the island and alerts the others. Kanate finds it peculiar since there are no known villages in the vicinity. Suspecting that it could be Kanagi, Hinohara and the group decide to investigate and ascertain the source of the smoke. Subsequently, it becomes clear that the bonfire was set by regular villagers who have established a camp in the forest. Jinchai recognizes Kuruni among them, realizing that these are people from his village. With joy and relief, he reunites with his mother and introduces her to Kanate, who receives heartfelt gratitude for saving Jinchai. However, Kanate starts to feel a sense of unease. In the conversation that follows, Kuruni explains that with the princess's downfall, chaos is poised to engulf the nation. As a preemptive measure, they decided to migrate to the borderlands before the outbreak of war. Kanate adds that ultimately, only one person can rule a nation, a king or a princess. Kadoha further elaborates that the king is the highest ranking Cho, and in the past, the twelve Shinshu fought amongst themselves for the throne. However, the princess took control of the Kamui and assumed the throne, bringing about a period of peace. Now, with her absence, the nation is likely to regress into an era of warfare. Amidst their conversation, Jinchai interrupts to inform Kanate that they need to continue their journey. They eventually make a stop near a secret waterfall. After Kiruni informs them that the path to the borderlands only opens once a month, he bids farewell to Hinohara and Kadoha, leaving them to continue their journey alone. Subsequently, Jinchai also bids them goodbye eager to move forward with Kanate. However, a sudden turn of events unfolds. Kanate makes the unexpected decision to stay behind, causing the path to begin closing. Jinchai's mother quickly seizes the opportunity and takes him away, leaving Kanate behind. With a heartfelt farewell, Kanate advises Jinchai never to leave his mother's side again. To their astonishment, Kanate reveals that it was his friends from the thieves' gang who had attacked Jinchai's village and separated him from his mother. In a surprising act of compassion, Hinohara extends an invitation for Kanate to join his squad, acknowledging the depth of his past actions. Together, they set off towards the capital, their destination ahead. After some time of traveling, Hinohara feels exhausted and decides to take a well-deserved break. Sensing his fatigue, Kadoha offers him a piece of meru meat, a local animal of Amoakuni known for its energizing properties. Meanwhile, in Japan, Arata grows weary of his mundane meals and finds himself longing for the taste of meru meat. Then, the scene transitions back to Hinohara, who unexpectedly spots a meru nearby. Initially, Hinohara perceives the creature as a dangerous and peculiar beast, but Kadoha reassures him that merus are not aggressive. To their surprise, the meru suddenly starts pursuing them, prompting Hinohara, Kadoha, and Kanate to run for their lives. They manage to evade it while it continues its relentless chase. Eventually, they encounter a young girl named Honi, who confesses to stealing a Meru egg for her mistress. It becomes apparent that the angry Meru is reacting to the theft. Out of nowhere, the persistent Meru reappears, this time singling out Kanate as its target, causing him to frantically flee. Meanwhile, Honi opens up about her intention to give the stolen Meru egg to her pregnant mistress, as the eggs are considered highly nutritious. However, their hopes are dashed when the egg unexpectedly hatches, revealing a baby Meru instead, crushing Honi's plan. Just then, Kanate returns accompanied by a man named Ohika. In a sudden turn of events, Hinohara collapses from exhaustion. Fortunately, Ohika takes it upon himself to bring Hinohara to his home, where his wife Fuyo provides him with the necessary medicine to alleviate his fever. While recovering, Hinohara glances at his phone and notices a text message from Suguru requesting to borrow a game, choosing to ignore it for the time being. Hinohara finds himself engrossed in the current situation. In a surprising revelation, Kanate fills in Hinohara, disclosing that Oika is Kanaga's loyal Zokusho. Zokusho are the trusted servants of the Twelve Shinshu. 
and if Oika discovers the truth about Hinohara's identity, it could spell trouble for him. To their astonishment, Oika arrives at that very moment. Later, Oika utilizes the power of his Hayagami's Kamui, Kanri, to reconstruct Kanate's weapon. He explains that Kanri can also create farm tools and occasionally armor. Oika shares his positive experiences with Kanagi, emphasizing the respect and camaraderie between them. He mentions that when he shared the news of his wife's pregnancy, Kanagi was genuinely happy for him. Meanwhile, Honi expresses her admiration for Oika and her desire to wear a dress like Kato. In response, Katoha offers to assist her in achieving that goal. The scene then shifts to Kanagi, who stands by the grave of his beloved Amisu. Using his Hayagami, Hamura, he creates a protective barrier and vows to ascend to the throne in her honor. Suddenly, a soldier approaches and informs him of trouble at King's residence. Kanagi rushes to investigate and discovers that Akachi has slain his Zokusha. On the other hand, Oika shares that the battle for the throne has already commenced, but he has no interest in participating. He values his peaceful life with his family and wishes to continue living that way. However, Oika expresses his belief that not all shows share his peaceful perspective. He introduces the concept of claiming the throne without resorting to violence. If all the show willingly submit to one individual and unite their Hayagami, it is possible to ascend without bloodshed. Submission occurs when a show passes on their soul and Hayagami to another show, allowing their soul to live on within the Hayagami it was submitted to. Oika surprises Hinohara by revealing his knowledge of the events that unfolded in the capital in Gatoya, hinting at his awareness of Hinohara's true identity. To Hinohara's relief, Oika states that if Tsutsuga submitted to Hinohara, it indicates his innocence. Suddenly, a soldier interrupts their conversation to inform Oika of a visitor. Afterward, Oika bumps into Honi, who is dressed in Kadoha's attire, and he commends her. Then, he assigns her a special task. Honi later informs Hinohara and his group that Oika has instructed them to leave the village. Meanwhile, Oika and Fuyo encounter Akachi, who reveals Kanagi's involvement in the plot to assassinate the princess. Akachi tells Oika that Kanagi has forsaken his allegiance to the princess to pursue his ambitions of becoming king and seeks to eliminate Hinohara. He requests Oika to become his Zokusho and simultaneously, Kanagi flies to rescue Oika. However, Oika firmly refuses to believe Akachi's words. Regardless of the truth, he cannot submit to Akachi as his loyalty lies with Kanagi. He declares that he will bear the weight of Kanagi's crimes as his Zokusho. Akachi realizes that Oika has made his decision and withdraws his Hayagami, Akoro. He then threatens to kill Fuyo, who is pregnant, unless Oika voluntarily submits to him. Akachi warns that if Oika refuses, he will watch Fuyo die before being forced to submit. Amid the tense situation, Hinohara prepares to intervene with his Tsukuyo, but Oika senses his presence and stands firm in his decision. He agrees to submit to Akachi's demand, but he requests that Akachi give his word not to harm his wife, family, or guests. Akachi reluctantly accepts Oika's plea. However, to everyone's shock, Akachi goes against his promise and kills Oika's servants. Afterward, he mercilessly kills Fuyo as well and, out of shock, Honi becomes unconscious. Then, he tears down the cloth hiding the presence between him and Hinohara's group but Kanagi arrives. Out of anger, he asks Akachi the reason for murdering all his Zokushos to which he replies that the battle for the throne has begun. Both of them summon their Hayagami and a fierce battle initiates between them. Kanagi attacks him with Himura but Akachi's Okoro blocks his flames successfully. Then, Akachi switches to the offensive and attacks Kanagi but Kanagi successfully evades his attacks. Akachi then destroys his airship and launches a powerful attack which diverts Kanagi's attention and inflicts damage upon Kanagi. Consequently, Akachi seizes the opportunity and gains the upper hand while the others get blown away in the air but Hinohara saves them. Kanagi furiously asks Akachi the reason for all the killing again. This time, he reveals that Amisu loved him yet he failed to save her from the flames which distracts him for a while. As a result of which, Akachi steals his Hayagami and forcefully tries to submit its power to him. Kanagi still doesn't give up and tries to assault him but Akachi blocks his punches. Akachi then calls Kanagi a traitor and wishes that the agony will remain with him forever, along with the sin carved into his right shoulder. Afterward, Akachi reveals that he won't kill him and instead, he'll force him to submit himself. Unable to withstand this unfairness, Hinohara intervenes and calls Akachi a demon with no soul. However, Akachi replies to him that once you become a show, it's either submit or be submitted to. Afterward, he grants Kanagi a reprieve to let him continue to suffer in his agony and leaves. Later, Honi requests Kanagi to bring her master back but he replies that he cannot because once a show who's been submitted and absorbed by another's Hayagami he can never return. He shouts that he can't retrieve Ohika and gets frustrated since he lost his Hayagami as well. 
Tony begins crying in agony and Kanagi prepares to leave, however, Hinohara interferes. He blames Hinohara for the war and for betraying all the Zokushos who believed in him. However, Kanagi reveals that they were under the control of the princess all the time and he couldn't let this opportunity pass him by. He wished to set Hamura free but now he has failed miserably. Out of regret, he leaves and Honi tells Hinohara that she despises all the show including him. Afterwards, Hinohara leaves but Kanate reminds him he has to lead the nation one day. Much to his surprise, Hinohara snaps and tells him that he will never become the king. Meanwhile, in Japan, Arata notices Suguru waiting for him outside his house. However, when he calls him, Suguru begins to run away but Arata catches him instantly. Afterwards, Suguru gets surprised which confuses Arata and he asks him the reason. Therefore, Suguru reveals that he hasn't been coming to school lately which is why he was surprised. Then, he returns the movie Arata lent to him and thanks him before leaving. The scene then shifts to Hinohara sitting alone and blaming himself for the death of Fuyo. He wishes to get stronger without causing any violence and make Akachi submit to him. However, Kanate informs him of the reality. He can either sit idle and sulk forever or he can get stronger to lead the nation one day. Consequently, Hinohara realizes that he was being irrational and Kadoha informs him that his Hayagami is the legendary Hayagami named Tsukuo. It is the Sword of Origins, one that doesn't fight but will reign over the world. Hinohara summons Tsukuyo by its name and gains full control of it while Kanagi notices the light from afar. The next day, Hinohara promises Honi that he'll rescue Oika from Akachi. Meanwhile in Japan, Arata goes to school and meets Katowaki. He believes Katowaki is Hinohara's friend and wishes to know everything about Hinohara from him. However, before Katowaki could say something, suddenly, Hinohara's mother intervenes and takes him with her. Later, it is revealed that she told the principal that the memory of her son hasn't returned yet but he insisted on going to school therefore she requests him to stay lenient. Meanwhile, out of anger, Katowaki summons Arata to the roof and calls him a liar who's faking amnesia. Anyhow, Arata gets tired of his big shot attitude and Katowaki tries to punch him. Much to his surprise, Arata blocks it effortlessly and kicks him in the gut before leaving. Back in Emuakuni, Katoha falls while crossing a river and Hinohara decides to take a stop in the grove they passed earlier. At the same time, Kanagi observes them from afar, and later it is revealed that Kadoha's ankle has been swollen. Kanate asks her if she can heal it herself to which she replies negatively. She reveals that the members of the Uname clan can't heal themselves. Consequently, Kanate goes out to look for medicinal herbs leaving Hinohara all alone with Kado. Later, she hugs him and proclaims that sometimes she feels like he's far away from her and it makes her feel lonely. She's implying that she has feelings for him but Hinohara ignores her and goes out because he's not Arata. Afterward, he again meets Arata through the Michihi no Tama and fills him in with all the information about the recent event. Arata realizes that things are getting dicey in Imokuni and asks him about Kadoha. However, Hinohara ignores his question and asks him how he feels about Kadoha. Arata reveals that they've been friends since their childhood and he considers Kadoha her little sister, a precious little sister he has to protect in any circumstances. Consequently, he requests Hinohara to protect Kadoha in his place, and the scene shifts to Kanate who reaches Amisu's grave. He finds the medicinal herbs on her grave but suddenly, he gets surrounded by huge flames. On the other hand, Arata informs Hinohara that he went to the school and beat up a guy named Katoaki. Hinohara gets shocked and suddenly, the mirror fades away. While returning to Katoa, he encounters Kanagi who tells him to hand over his Heigami, Tsukuo. Hinohara manages to free himself and suddenly, the place gets lit up with huge flames. A fight begins between them and Kanagi reveals that without Hamura, he no longer controls the flames. What's worse is that a lava flow runs along an underground vein in this area and occasionally, it bursts through the surface. The flames here devour people but being a show, he's immune to them and the flames are still his very being. Afterward, Hinohara summons Tsukoyo and instantly destroys all the flames. Kanagi gets tempted with the power of Tsukoyo and orders him to hand it over. If he does, he'll kill him painlessly. He informs Hinohara that he'll use Tsukuyo to make Akachi submit and get his Hamura back. Kanagi approaches him fearlessly, but Hinohara gets frozen and he easily steals his Tsukuyo. However, before he can kill Hinohara, Kadoha interrupts him and requests him to stop this madness. While running, she gets caught in the flames and Kanagi recalls the time when the same thing happened to Amisu. Hinohara uses this opportunity to run away from Kanagi and jumps into the flames to save Kado. However, he also gets stuck with her, and to their surprise, Kanagi rescues them. Afterward, it is revealed that during Kanaga's childhood, his father introduced him to the new helpers of the mansion who were Akachi and Amisu. However, as they grew up Kanagi and Akachi became best friends. They used to spar together but Akachi would always win while Amisu cheered for Kanagi. One day, Kanaga's father was killed by the revolting servants but he along with Akachi and Amisu tried to escape. They were chased by the servants and Akachi decided to stay behind to let the other two escape. 
Consequently, Kanagi and Amisu escaped. However, in the present, Katoha fails to heal the wound on Kanaga's right shoulder. Kanate believes he's sure that it's a wound Kanagi received before he became a show and wakes up. Afterward, it is disclosed that Kanagi and Amisu left Haniyasu but later arrived in Kagatsuchi where they were saved by Oik. All the people of Kagatsuchi were nice, that's why Kanagi and Amisu decided to live out their lives here but an adversary took place. Kanagi became ill for five days and Amisu decided to look out for medicinal herbs. However, Oika informed her that the underground vein is active right now and they must wait until it calms. Despite the warning, Amisu went on to look for the medicinal herbs and got trapped in the flames. Anyhow, an ill Kanagi found her but his right shoulder was caught up in flames and Amisu died right in front of his eyes. Consequently, out of regret, he tried to kill himself as well but Hamura, the god of flames chose him as his show and he survived. The scene then shifts to Amisu's grave where Hinohara offers Kanagi to join his group meanwhile it is revealed that the mysterious six shoes are on the move. The six shoe reveal that the princess's Amatsuriki, her life force, is gradually weakening. Without proper care, she will eventually perish. However, Hinohara is determined to reach the capital and save her. Moreover, they reveal that Tsukuyo, the Sword of Origins, has awakened after a long slumber. If the princess can come into contact with Tsukuyo, she has a chance of being revived. Nevertheless, it will not submit easily and will pose a challenge to obtain its power which is why they have a plan. The scene transitions to Hinohara and Kanade engaged in a sparring session, aiming to enhance Hinohara's swordsmanship. Kanagi watches their training with arrogance, commanding them to fetch food for him. Inohara clarifies that it was Katoha who went to gather the food and Kanate tells him to wait. This sparks an argument between Kanate and Kanagi, with Kanate becoming irritated by Kanaga's assumptions. However, their dispute is interrupted as Katoha returns with the food. Despite this, Kanaga's focus remains fixated on Tsukuyo. Back in Japan, Kadoaki's frustration and resentment towards Hinohara continue to intensify as he endures ridicule at school. Meanwhile, Arata returns home, where now confronts him about his distant behavior towards their mother. Now urges Arata to have a conversation with their mother, but he becomes flustered and flees from the situation. Later, Arata encounters Suguru outside his house and questions their friendship. Suguru, feeling ashamed, admits that he was coerced by Kadoaki into denying his friendship with Hinohara. He sincerely apologizes to Arata for his behavior, and Arata forgives him. Arata then asks Suguru to lead him to Kadoaki's residence. It is revealed that Kadoaki's father is a city councilman who has grown tired of his son's rebellious nature. Kadoaki's father tries to prevent him from leaving the house, but Kadoaki defies him. The situation escalates when Kadoaki's father insults him for quitting the track team during his second year, provoking a furious response from Kadoaki. He talks back to him and calls him a corrupt city councilman who cheated on his mother. Consequently, his father gets furious and slaps him. The scene then shifts to Emil Kuni, where Kanagi reveals that they have entered Yoranami's domain. Yoranami is one of the twelve Shinchu who is the show of a water Hayagami. He can control rain, that's why Kanagi advises everyone to find someplace which is dry. Later, Hinohara realizes that Kanaga's Hayagami is fire. Yoranami's Hayagami is water and Akacha's Hayagami is earth. He asks Kanagi to tell him about the other Shinchu however. Kanagi advises him to not get too dependent because he's after Tsukuyo as well. Afterward, he reveals that the twelve Shinchu never did anything together, except at special ceremony, particularly the six Shu. The six Shu are mysterious and strange men who have never revealed their faces. Kanagi advises Hinohara they're not the kind of people he'd want to fight against. Meanwhile, Yoranami Zokusho Haruko observes Hinohara and his group. Later, it is revealed that the six Shu has realized that Hinohara is from another world. Therefore, to eliminate his Hayagami, Tsukuyo they must awaken a dark force, Haranawa. One of the six Shu reveals his identity and prepares to enter the Kando forest. On the other hand in Japan, now informs her mother that Arata is missing from his room. Subsequently, it is revealed Suguru and Arata are waiting for Kadoaki near a shop. Then, Kadoaki overhears his friends talking shit behind his back. When he confronts them, they threaten to gang up on him and beat him up but Arata intervenes. He proposes to team up with Kadoaki but the bullies leave. Much to Arata's surprise, Kadoaki gets mad and reveals that he's tired of being looked down upon by him. However, Arata tells him he's mistaken and prepares to tell him that he's not Hinohara. Suddenly, Hinohara's mother intervenes and slaps him for leaving without permission. She starts crying and finally, Arata calls her mother while Kadoaki runs away angrily. Later, he starts recalling all his bad memories and blames Hinohara for them. His hatred reaches a point where he vows to kill Hinohara and the scene then shifts to the Kando forest. Haranawa requests the sacred forest to open up a path to the other world and find someone with immense hatred. Consequently, he switches places with Kadoaki. And later, Kadoaki successfully emerges from the sacred forest. 
The Six Shu fills him with all the information about Hinohara and tells him that he intends to become the king of Amawakuni. Kadowaki believes he's a coward who can't become the king and the Six Shu order him to become a show himself. If he becomes one of them, the Twelve Shinshu, he can have the opportunity to defeat his nemesis Hinohara by himself. It is revealed that the one to make Hinohara submit must be the one who despises him and the one who bears powerful hatred against him. Therefore, these feelings are the reason why Kadoaki was able to come to Amoakuni. Kadoaki gets determined more than ever to crush Hinohara and later, the six Shu reveal that there is a sword that suits him perfectly. They inform Kadoaki that he can only defeat Arata if he pairs up with a Hayagami. However, whether or not the sword will choose him depends on him. Afterward, they take him to Orochi, the only Hayagami that can defeat Tsukuyo and Hinohara. However, like Tsukuyo it has been asleep for a long time and kept sealed by generation after generation of Haim clan members. Kadoaki tries to summon Orochi which alerts the other members of the Twelve Shinshu. Orochi orders Kadoaki to show him his hatred and consequently, he gains control over the Hayagami Orochi to become a show. To Hinohara's astonishment, he comes face to face with Kadoaki, who summons Orochi and launches an attack against him. Swiftly, Hinohara summons Tsukuyo and successfully blocks Kadoaki's assault. Seeking answers, Hinohara questions Kadoaki about his purpose in this world. But instead of a rational response, Kadoaki hurls insults at him. He belittles Hinohara, calling him a coward who fled to Amoakuni to escape Bun, a worthless individual deserving of a life of subservience. The barrage of insults fuels Hinohara's fury, causing his Tsukuyo to become consumed by darkness. In a fit of rage, Hinohara delivers a powerful strike against Kadoaki who manages to defend himself but sustains a bleeding wound on his head. Overwhelmed by hatred and anger, Hinohara begins to transform into an onagami, but Kadoha intervenes just in time. She provides comfort and manages to calm Hinohara down, although she collapses in the process. As the six Shu assess the situation, they order Kadoaki to retreat for the time being, as they hadn't anticipated Tsukuyo becoming demonized. Acknowledging their instructions, Kadoaki begrudgingly withdraws, realizing the need to awaken Arachi fully. With that, the six Shu depart in their airship. Amid the chaos, Hinohara, feeling ashamed of his actions, releases his grasp on Tsukuyo, allowing Kanagi to seize the opportunity and steal the sword. Kanagi swiftly flees with Tsukuyo, prompting Kanate to give chase. Meanwhile, Kadoha regains consciousness and soon realizes that Hinohara is not the Arata she knows. She senses a stark difference in his reactions and demeanor, prompting her to question him and request the truth. Hinohara admits that he is indeed Hinohara Arata, while the Arata she knows resides in the other world, living a separate life. As Hinohara prepares to leave, Kadoha stops him and implores him to reveal the reason behind his demonization. In the meantime, Miyabi, Kadoaki's attendant, wakes him up and expresses her willingness to assist him in any way she can. A smile forms on Kadoaki's face, as he believes that Hinohara has finally started to take him seriously. On the other hand, Hinohara reveals that every day, he was bullied by Kadoaki and his buddhas. They would push him around with no resistance and he was forced to submit all the time. He's aware that power is necessary sometimes but the pain, misery, and fear made him never use power against anyone else. However, deep inside he possessed the same power as Kadoaki and Akachi which made him become a demon. Now, he's afraid to control that power. That's why he dropped Tsukuyo and afterward, he leaves. The scene then shifts to Kane, who finally finds Kanagi standing idle but he decides to return. Later, he gets furious with Hinohara as he refuses to take back his Tsukuyo. However, Kanagi tells him that his Tsukuyo is heavy with the burden of responsibility and Hinohara accepts his Tsukuyo. The next day, Hinohara spars with Kanate again but Kanagi interferes with them and tells Hinohara to spar with him instead. During the sparring, Kanagi tells him that Kadoaki has become a member of Six Shu. He warns him that Kadoaki will come after him again and advises him to be stronger. Afterward, Kanagi throws away Hinohara's Tsukuyo in the forest and tells him he's not worth believing at the moment. He orders Hinohara to find Tsukuyo before sundown and if he fails he must leave them at once. Later, Hinohara finds a wolf with Tsukuyo in its mouth and starts chasing the animal. While running, he ponders whether he'll be able to control Tsukuyo or not. And suddenly, he recalls his good memories with Kadoaki. He regains his faith in himself and the scene then shifts to Kadoaki. He tells Miyabi that he despises Hinohara and that one day he'll crush him. However, Miyabi claims the fact that he can't stop thinking about him means that he likes him. Afterward, Kadoaki reveals that back in middle school, he was in a slump. However, out of pity, Hinohara slowed down during their race which made him furious. Kadoaki thought Hinohara was his only friend who didn't look down upon him but he was betrayed by him. On the other hand, Hinohara completes the quest of Kanagi and gains his approval. Afterward, he walks up to Kane and tells her that Kadoaki got him past his hesitation. 
Suddenly, he hugs her and reveals that he wishes to change Katowaki's heart. He promises her that he won't ever become a demon and both of them realize they're in love. Somewhere else, Haruko notices that Hinohara has the power of darkness and the heart to calm it as well. He believes perhaps he's the one who can return Yorinami to what he was. Yorinami has been observing Hinohara all this time who has finally reached his domain. It is revealed that Yorinami has become ruthless and demands perfection. He traps Shisachi, his Zokusho in a water bubble for his failure to control the salt supplies over Iwakuni. However, after a lot of pleading, he sets him free and announces that those who are going to serve him must be flawless in their duty. Later, Kanagi shows Hinohara and the others the path which leads to Tameori where Yorinami resides. However, Hinohara reveals that he doesn't wish to face Yorinami yet. Before he meets him face to face, he needs to know his personality and what he's like. Consequently, he must meet Yorinami's Zokusho first. Kadoha agrees as she reveals that Hinohara doesn't make others submit by fighting. Instead, he calms their desire to fight and accepts the life force they gave him. Later, Kanagi takes them to the most prosperous city of Emoakuni, Suzukura. He reveals that Yorinami's Zokusho rules this city although he's never met him but his name is Haruko. Afterward, they find that there's a passage tax for both entering and leaving the city. Unfortunately, they're short on money and if they want to enter the city they'd have to work off what they owe. Suddenly, Haruko arrives and introduces himself with his alias Suhiro. He takes them inside and shows them to the city. However, he reveals that men work in the quarry while women work in the textile workshop and he'd get them a job. Later, Kanate and Hinohara are appointed to break huge rocks while Kanagi's job is to transport rocks. It is revealed that the rules for slacking off in this city are quite strict and not even little kids are granted any sort of leniency. Suddenly, Kanate and Hinohara notice a little kid struggling to transport rocks. Meanwhile, Hinohara meets Kadoha during the break, and this time, they behave a bit awkwardly with one another. Meanwhile, one of the members of the Six Shu informs Kadoaki that they're flying toward Haniyasu. There, he wants him to meet a man who has experienced something similar to what happened between him and Hinohara. It is revealed that the man he's talking about is none other than Akachi who mercilessly killed the barbarians when the Kamui of the Twelve Shinshu were temporarily unleashed. On the other hand, Hinohara roams the city while asking around about Haruko. Suddenly, he meets Suhiro who informs him that Yorinami was the one who came up with the laws of this city. Thanks to him, this city has grown to become the most prosperous city in the country. The next day, the little kid is blamed by the other workers for breaking a valuable wagon. Consequently, the chief fires him and doesn't give him his pay either. Kanate gets furious and prepares to fight but Suhiro intervenes. Later, it is revealed that there are slums behind the city's lively facade. Everyone who arrives in Suzukura hopes to get rich quickly but the reality isn't simple. The little kid Ruka reveals that his parents were wholesale dealers who got sick and died last year. Afterward, they went bankrupt and all the workers quit their jobs. What's worse is that the chief was the head clerk at their shop. Kanate suggests he leave the city but Ruka reveals he doesn't have enough money. Later, Suhiro tells Kanagi that Haruko has developed a liking for Hinohara. Kanagi praises Hinohara and tells him that he's a formidable man. During the evening, Kanate prepares soup for everyone which reminds Hinohara about his mother. He recalls that during the period of bullying his mother always supported him. Consequently, he tells Ruka that the world is a cruel place and he must stand up to fight for himself. Kanate and Hinohara reveal that tonight they'd help him escape the city. On the other hand, Katawaki clashes with Akachi and offers to join him. He tells him that his nemesis Kanagi has teamed with Hinohara but Akachi calls Katawaki a rugrat and refuses to join him. Afterwards, Katawaki expresses his desire to destroy Hinohara but Akachi points his Okoro at his face and tells him he cannot defeat Hinohara. He believes Katawaki is trapped by the phantom of the bond reflected in his eyes and sets him free by stabbing his eye. Back in Suzukura, Kane and Hinohara help Ruka escape the city but Suhiro interrupts them. Then, he reveals that his real name is Haruko and he's Yorinami's number one Zokusho. He attacks Hinohara with his Hayagami, Takara which produces money but Hinohara easily gains the upper hand. Then, Hinohara's sense of justice gives him hope and he claims that only he is capable of turning Yorinami into the person he once was. Lastly, Haruko promises Ruka that he'll change the city and decides to defy Yorinami. Hinohara and his group reach Yorinami's exquisite palace, Tameori. Afterward, it is revealed that Yorinami's mother was always dissatisfied with him and told him to train in martial arts. Now, his desire to claim the throne is to please his mother's desire. Meanwhile, Kadoha tells Hinohara that she'll watch over him until the day he returns to Earth and leaves. Later, she gets abducted by Yorinami in a water bubble which causes him to carelessly rush toward Tameori. There, he finds her trapped in a water sphere and tries to break it with his Tsukuyo but fails. Then, he meets Yorinami who tells him to either submit to him or make him submit then. Kadoha will be set free. He reveals that he'll do whatever it takes to fulfill his mother's wishes and tells her to watch him. 
Afterward, he summons his Hayagami, Nakasawa, and attacks Hinohara but he blocks it with Tsukuyo. Moreover, Yorinami traps Kanagi and Kanate to prevent them from interfering. At the same time, all of Yorinami's Zokusho observe the battle while rooting for Hinohara. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Akachi was impressed by Katowaki's resolve to kill Hinohara. Consequently, he gave his eye to him and told him to fly toward Tameori to kill Hinohara. The scene then shifts to Hinohara who gets distracted by Katoha and gets trapped by the time reversal jutsu of Yorinami. Much to his surprise, Katowaki intervenes with the resolve to defeat Hinohara. He attacks Yorinami but gets trapped in the same jutsu. Yorinami reveals his jutsu causes the enemy to submit to him while they're asleep. On the other hand, Hinohara meets his mom who consoles him about everything he complains about. However, suddenly she tells him to submit to Yorinami but he refuses and Yorinami gets mad. He believes no one can defy their mother and decides to kill Hinohara. Fortunately, Hinohara hears the sound of Katoha's voice and realizes that he's in a trap. Afterward, he breaks the jutsu and rescues Katoha as well. Yorinami tries to trap him again but his Hayagami loses its will to fight. Later, it is revealed that Yorinami's real mother died a long time ago and he created an illusion for himself, a water doll. Yorinami reveals despite his achievements his mother never acknowledged him. Even after he became one of the twelve Shinshu, she showed a face of disgust but before her death, she gave him a memento. It was a box that he never opened nor intended to. Katoha tells him to open it as there might be a message in it and he finds his mother's locket in it. Much to everyone's surprise, Shisuchi reveals that he knew the true nature of Yorinami's mother. She always loved him and wanted him to become strong enough to battle chaos. Consequently, he apologizes to everyone for being so harsh, and suddenly Katowaki interrupts him. Katowaki tempts Hinohara to become a demon and kill him but he refuses. Hinohara reveals he'll change his heart, however, Katowaki calls him a fool. Katowaki reveals his heart only yields to power and orders Hinohara to fight him. Kanagi notices that Katowaki's Hayagami, Orochi, has evolved. The two exchange blows with their swords and the battle between the two Hayagami begins. Hinohara tries to run away and Kikuri tries to connect with them. Meanwhile, Katowaki continues to attack using Orochi and orders him to submit to him. Kane and Katoha cheer for Hinohara which makes him realize that he's carrying the trust of numerous people. Katowaki gains the upper hand but everyone else decides not to intervene as it's Hinohara's fight. Yorinami reveals since Tsukuyo doesn't possess offensive Kamui it can do nothing if it can't nullify Orochi's Kamui. Consequently, he bids farewell to everyone and decides to submit to Hinohara. Hinohara shows reluctance but Kanagi informs him that submitting to another is not to be killed or sacrificed. Rather, it is leaving one's life force in one's hands. Then, he urges Hinohara to accept Yorinami's life force. Consequently, Yorinami submits to him while destroying his palace and the battle begins again. The two clash their swords but this time Hinohara gains the upper hand and completely awakens his Tsukuyo. Tsukuyo's new light Sausei no Hinoa makes Hinohara appear like a king and he lands the final blow. Ultimately, he wins the fight and sends Katowaki flying. Afterward, Katoha arrives and hugs him. In the aftermath, all of Yorinami's Zokusho also submit to him. Afterward, he informs Arata about everything while the Six Shu prepares a new plan to defeat Hinohara. Later, it is revealed that all the remaining twelve Shinshu aim to compete against Tsukuyo while Kanagi vows to defeat Akachi. Meanwhile, Katowaki praises Hinohara's strength and wishes to surpass him one day. Princess Kikuri, on the other hand, waits for Hinohara to arrive in the capital. That's all for today. If you enjoyed our video, do give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content.